What's up everybody welcome back to another video today I'm going to start the process of creating HTML tutorials now we're going to be using HTML5 which is the current version of HTML that the vast majority of websites use there are earlier versions of HTML and there's also XHTML which is a little bit more strict but you're going to find that the vast majority and overwhelming amount of websites online use HTML5 all right so what is HTML? Well, HTML is considered the skeleton of a website, which means that it is what gives the browsers information about specific elements on a website and gives a greater detail on what that particular part of the site actually is. So what does that mean? All right, so we're on my website over here, pixelweb.com. If we right click view page source, we see the HTML that is under this website right here. So you see this, you see all this information and it's styled out. The search engines and the browsers, this is what they're looking at. So they're looking at the HTML doc type, the opening HTML tag, the head tag, some meta tags, some link tags. And don't worry about what these mean yet because in later videos and tutorials, I'll give you more information and go step by step on what each of these tags mean. But what you can see here is that we are linking out to other elements of a website. And if you scroll down, we have uh, our navigation section. We have some list items. Everything's contained within divs. And these class sections over here, uh, this is a container. Again, this is CSS. And CSS is important because since HTML is just a skeleton without CSS, the website will look kind of bland. So HTML gives information to the browsers about what a website is and the content and CSS is used in order to style out a website and make it look visually appealing. All right, so this is the skeleton of my website over here. What we could also do is you could right click and inspect and this also shows you the skeleton of the website and also shows you the CSS that's being applied to specific parts. So if you wanna see how a website is accomplishing what it's doing in terms of the um, the style or how it's, uh, wrapping certain sections together you can inspect the element or you can view the page source and you can study on it so that's good now what will you need in order to get started learning how to code with html well you need a web browser and i recommend chrome or firefox reason is because they provide the best developer tools in terms of these inspect elements and targeting specific sections of uh of the website itself so definitely either use chrome or firefox You'll also need a text editor, and the one that I like, there's actually two. One is called Atom. You can get it at atom.io, and the second one is Visual Studio Code. Now, both of these are great text editors. They're free to use. There's no freemium model, and they work on Linux, Mac, and Windows computers. Both Atom and Visual Studio Code will work on any operating system. So just to show you what each of these code editors look like. I have them both open over here. So this is Visual Studio Code. And of course you can theme these out and give them different looks and feels and add on functionality, but this is a basic look of the actual text editor. So we could, uh, over here, we can put some information. So I can paste some information over here. So we have our doc type, we have our HTML tag, opening and closing. We have our head tag, opening and closing. We have our title tag, we have the body tag, and this is an H1, and this is a paragraph. So that's how it looks in Visual Studio Code. If we go over here to the Atom Text Editor, this is how it looks over here. Now again, you could style these out with different types of themes and packages, but I'll create different tutorials that go over the different types of uh, options you have with each of these uh, text editors. All right, so for this specific video, I'll go forward with the Atom Text Editor. And in a later video, I'll use the Visual Studio Code. I'll bounce back and forth between Atom and Visual Studio Code just to give you a comparison of how each of them look and feel and work and operate. But in reality, the text editor is just one tool that you're gonna be using to develop a website. And while text editors do matter because you want certain types of functionality like line numbers, syntax highlighting, the ability to extend it for your particular type of workflow and project. Both these text editors provide very similar functionality and you'll be able to follow along regardless of which one you're using. Now there is a third option in terms of text editors that's very popular out there. I'll introduce you to it very quickly. It's called Sublime Text. 
Now, this is a very popular text editor. A lot of people love it. It's extremely fast. It has a lot of functionality behind it. And you might want to consider using this one. But this does have a freemium model, meaning you could use it completely for free and you have all the functionality from Sublime Text. But every now and then you're going to get a pop-up that requests that you pay for a license. And that costs about 70 bucks in order to do that. So if you don't mind spending $70 in order to not have the pop-ups, then Sublime Text is going to be a great option. If you don't mind the pop-ups, they don't come up that often, maybe uh, once an hour or something like that. Then you could also still use this one. But the ones I used is Atom and Visual Studio Code. All right, so I showed you the skeleton of a website, showed you the uh, text editors that we're going to be using. Now, how do you organize yourself when you're working with HTML? Well, you can just create a folder. So I'll go over here into my desktop. I'm going to close this out here and I'll create a new folder and I'll call it HTML tutorials. Okay, so that's on my desktop right there. Now what I'll do is I'll go back to my text editor and this is the Atom text editor again. Right now it's not saved, so it's untitled, and you can tell that it's not saved because it has this little circle there. So what we could do, just Command S or Control S, and we could save this. So I'll save it to my desktop in that HTML tutorials folder. Matter of fact, I'm going to change the name there just to keep it simple. I'll put no dash there, and then we're going to give it a name. So we're going to call this file index.html. All HTML documents are going to have an HTML file extension. And that's how the browsers will be able to identify that we are working with HTML. So now you see that a whole entire project folder opened up over here. So I'm going to remove this project folder. So this is my project folder here. And you saw that I just saved it to the desktop by accident. So what I'll do, so I'll go to my desktop. Just drag that into that folder. Go back here. Now you see it's no longer saved because the location changed. So we don't have to save this one because we have this one right here. All right, so this is the beginning of a HTML document. We have our doc type. We have our lesser than symbol, exclamation point, doc type, HTML, and then the greater than symbol. You just have this once. The browsers are going to be looking for this when they scan a website. So that's why this is important. Then you have your opening and your closing HTML tags over here. So you can signify that the difference between them by seeing that we have the lesser than, then HTML, greater than. And over here we have the lesser than. And then we have this forward slash and then HTML and then the greater than symbol. So everything inside of here is inside of a HTML document. And then we have our head tag. Now the head tags are only seen by the browsers themselves. They provide specific types of information to the browser. And there's a lot of information that can go in here. And I'll give you some of the most important elements that you're going to want to have here. But we have the opening head tag and the closing head tag. Again, you can signify the opening from the closing with the forward slash over here for the closing one. Then you also have the title tag. So the title tag is important because it also tells the browser what the page title that you're visiting is. So this one is HTML tutorials. Now if we go back to our folder over here, we see we have our HTML tutorials title right there. And if you right click and view page source, you see the information that we had in our text editor is right here now. All right, so that's that. Now we have our body tag. So all your main content that's going to be viewed by a person visiting your website is going to be within the opening and closing body tags. So you see the opening body tag comes after the closing head tag here. And then the closing body tag comes right before the closing HTML tag. And then we have our H1 tag, opening and closing. And then the content in the middle is what's going to be displayed to the person. Then you have your paragraph tag, opening and closing. And this is where all your paragraph information is going to be at. So if we go back to the browser, you can see right here, what's being displayed is just this is a heading, this is a paragraph. If you look over here at the uh, inspect elements, you can see that what's in the head tag you don't see output it and you don't see the actual tags, but you see the content inside the tags. Okay. So we're going to be creating a bunch of documents that will be contained within this HTML tutorials folder in the upcoming videos. I'll go over more elements and more selectors and more HTML tags and the different parts of our 
of a web page and a website and how you can link between each page and how you can create certain types of structures. All right, so I just want to give you the brief introduction on how to get started with HTML and HTML5. So we're using the Atom text editor. We're using the Visual Studio Code text editor. I recommend either using Chrome or using Firefox. They're both great options in terms of your web browser. You saw how you can inspect elements. We have no CSS over here. So this is the user agent style sheet. So this is what the browser is outputting. Since we have nothing here in terms of our own styles, the browser is gonna give it some very basic styling. In later tutorials, I'll go more into CSS. And then later on after that, I'll go into JavaScript. And we're gonna be building this up gradually. And now another tool that I wanna show you is an HTML checker. So this is an HTML checker to make sure that the code that you're writing actually validates. And this is important because you want to make sure you're presenting the information accurately to the search engines and to the browsers. So here you see I put in my website link, pixelweb.com, and it's going to check to make sure that, that it validates as an HTML document. So I'm going to check it, and it says document checking completed, no errors or warnings to show. Now that's important. So you may want to take note of this website, validator.w3.org, and use that when you're checking your HTML. All right, so we have our introduction video just wrapping up. This was a introduction to getting started with HTML. And in the next video, we're gonna go into more information on the stuff that you're gonna be putting within your head tags and the other types of tags you could have within certain sections of your HTML document. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification icon down below so that way when I release a new video, you'll be notified. And I will see you in the next episode. Take care.